everybody, and welcome back to another survival series video. Now, here we are in the bedroom of my base, and we have some things to do, but first let me just take out my armor and we'll put that on. It's always good to be protected. And my tools, axes, trident, my buckets, and we'll also take rest of this stuff with us. And we can't forget the spyglass. Now in this chest are the spoils of some treasure chests that I looted over the last little while. And yeah, I found more treasure maps, along with some nice Frostwalker boots. And along with these smithing templates, I'm not entirely sure what I can do with these, but I'm sure along the way I'll fi figure it out. If you guys know what those are for, let me know in the comments. Now, it's night time at this village, and if we head up onto the roof, we can get a pretty good view of the surrounding lands, an even better view if we use the spyglass. There are some monsters over there in the desert, but they can't get to us. This village is safe and very secure. Nothing can harm us here. Now up there is the watchtower, but I don't think we'll go up there. I'm a little bit worried about phantoms spawning. So we'll just head back down And we'll go down another level to the main floor. Looks like this guy was thinking I was going to let him in. <laughs> Not today, my friend. But this village sits on a hill. And I have many memories of before the days when this was fortified, rowing past it on a boat, in a boat, and looking at the little enclave of civilization, standing alone against the hostile environment. Now, this structure here I use to battle Endermen. It's two blocks high, so they can't get in. You can see. Now, speak of the devil, there's an Enderman there. And he doesn't seem to want to come inside. Maybe he sees me holding his axe and he's having second thoughts. <coughs> we'll just give him a poke. And one more. He still doesn't want to come in. <coughs> See if we can impress him. Oh, he 
He's coming in. Where is he? There he is. <coughs> Have a nice day, sir. So that's how easy it is to fight Enderman using that structure. And this wall we recently reinforced so nothing can shoot over it. I was thinking pillagers could, but now this place is pretty safe. I don't think these zombies are smart enough to see me here, even though I was jumping around <laughs> trying to get their attention. Is there anything up this way? That's what I was worried about. Now they can't get me in here, but I don't want to be a sitting duck until the sun comes up. So we're going to try to kill some of these guys. Here comes another one. these guys. Let's build one. So if I can get them to fly underneath this lamp, it would really help in slaying them. That's what I can hide my mind. Because all of a sudden I don't want to come over. Maybe I can get this guy. One left. Oh, I can't reach him. But the sun is going to come very shortly. Oh, there's two of them up there now. Well, there goes that one. And I have a feeling that the sun will take care of this last one. We'll try, try back. Yeah, the same thing. Dispatch this phantom. And there he goes. So we can take down this ledge. We don't need it any longer. Let's take a walk, shall we? We'll head down these stairs and back over to my house. What's in here? 
nothing that I really need. I'll put the pearl away for safekeeping. Grab the chicken. And that filled me up pretty good. Put those membranes away. Let's see. Doors. Some wood. And was there anything else up here? I can leave some of the arrows and my silk touch shovel. And I think we are good to go. Now, we are going to head down into the mines. Specifically, into this very large ravine that we can see down in there. Now this used to be a very dark and spooky place, but in the years since I first started mining here, I have it pretty well mined out. There's a few ways we can get down there. I think we'll just go this way. And I have these slabs in lieu of doors. So we'll step out onto the ledge. And there's still some bad guys down here, as well as some pockets of ores that I hadn't mined the last time I was down here. So we'll get as many of those as we can. I don't really feel like getting that iron up there. There's plenty more where that came from. This is a very large ravine. It branches out into many different avenues. And some of those avenues are still undiscovered, as in I haven't gone in and lit them up and cleared them yet. Someday we will, but for now let's just mine this coal. Coal is a resource that we can never have enough of because we do tend to go through it quite rapidly. Especially when we're smelting iron and gold. We'll sneak along this ledge. And there's a section that is still dark back in there. I haven't made my way through there yet. Now we're going to go around to the other side. We're going to bridge across somewhere around here. I'm just looking for a, a place that would work. My pickaxe is kind of on its last legs and I didn't bring a spare. I should have done that. 
So if, if we go across right here, that should work pretty good. Just have to make sure we don't fall. I'll use some cobblestone and bridge across this gap. Mine our way into the wall. And then make our way down to that ledge. And that's typically the way I go about exploring these ravines. I start at the top and I cut a ledge all the way around it and light it up. And then light up the wall of the ravine below and above me. Then when I get back to my starting point, I go down a few blocks and make another ledge. And so on and so forth until we reach the bottom. And that line of thinking is in full view in this ravine. Now I, I guarantee you that we are really raking in this coal using this fortune pickaxe. I'm probably going to run out of space in my inventory if we keep going at this. sneak along here until we get into this area. Now that's where we came from. We'll go down here. So that section is still... Yeah, there's some iron and coal that I need to get. What do we have down here? Another ledge. So this is the second tier. I'm just going to take a look and see what's up here. Nothing. <laughs> and this all looks to be mined out. So I'll tell you what we'll do. This isn't that far down. So we'll just drop right down onto the third tier. And this gives us access to this section. We're going to get over there and mine all of that out. But we don't want to fall down there. That, would, that wouldn't be good. Now this area up here is still more or less not explored. I don't feel that safe mining in there, but in here is a bit of a different story. I catch a lot of flack from some guys who say that I use an obscene amount of torches. Well, I, I guess that's true, but all these torches light this place up, so much so that nothing can spawn. I mean, who wants monsters spawning in their minds all the time? I sure don't. Anything that I can do 
to limit the possibility of getting blown up by a rogue creeper. I will gladly do. And that, once again, goes back to the gathering of coal. It takes a lot of coal to make a lot of torches. But all of those torches enable the gathering of even more coal. And it's kind of a never-ending cycle that just keeps on giving. Now up there is where we stood, and this gravel tower was the original way that I accessed this ravine. And it bears some resemblance to the five-star ravine in the Patronville realm. This one has more than five branches, though. So I'm not really sure if that would be a good name. Now back over here, you can see some cobblestone down there. That's, that's a spawner. I can't really remember what kind of spawner it is. But maybe we'll head down there in a second and kind of refresh our memory. Now what did I say about coal? Here's a pretty good vein. This will probably net us half a stack using the fortune pickaxe. And there are uh, thir uh, 32 pieces in half a stack, 64 in a full stack. Now I'm probably going to wind up blocking this coal up to save space should I run out of room in my inventory. Bridge across here. It's a little bit dark back in there, but creepers can't spawn on a wall, so, well, you know what, maybe we'll just go back in here and throw a couple torches up, like so, and we'll drop down into this water. No matter how high you are, if you fall into water, you will not take damage. And here's the spawner. It looks like a, uh, is that a spider spawner? Yeah. Okay, there's coal that I want to get on the left side. Oh, that's obsidian. I was wondering what that was. Now we'll just, um, tell you what, we'll, we'll head over to this bridge. No sense making a new one. Throw a torch down there. Kind of make this a bit more safe. And we'll mine this coal. This is looking pretty good. Pretty good. Sneak our way back. Now down there is just a, an access to the next tier. Now, is there anything else at this level that needs to be mined? Not 
really seeing much. There's coal over, th oh yeah, a lot of coal still. Coal and iron. We'll get this, and then we'll head over to the other side. Straight across. That looks to be the mother load over there. And I'm not worried about giving, getting every single speck of ore out of this ravine. But I am going to get this because there's a lot of it here. So we'll tower our way up. Grab all of this coal. See if we can't get the rest of this. Oh no, oh, that fell. But that didn't, so we're in pretty good, pretty good stead. get down there. So, if I remember, this is an access. Yeah. Kind of dark. So those torches, they mark the way out. And what's down here? I guess I was mining obsidian down here at one point. It's a dead end. This was a pretty productive mine, and there's still a lot more to do here, but we'll leave that. Let's head up this staircase. Now, where this ends up, I am not 100% sure. We appear to be in some kind of uh, room. Oh, I remember what this is. Yeah. So 
So up here is this little building you might have wondered about on the outskirts of the village. And the sun is going down. So what do you say we head back to now let's take a little stroll through this way. And we'll go and process our haul. Down to the furnaces we go. to uh, replace the slab that we took out. We can't have any creepies coming up the stairs and causing havoc. So that'll keep them at bay. Yeah, that's a long ways down. Okay, let's put some iron in that furnace, this furnace, this one, and this one. And while that smelts, we'll do a bit of housekeeping. away some of these blocks that I don't need to carry around with me. A lot of people, when they play Minecraft, they get rid of blocks that they don't need. I tend not to do that. Everything will come in handy at some point. Now, I don't live my life, my r real life, like that. But in Minecraft, no matter how much you hoard, none of it will take up any more space in your house than what your computer takes up. So, there's really no point in throwing things away because you may very well find one day in the future that you need, that you need things. Now, back in that direction, in all, in all directions actually, I have other villages on this ocean. Take those boots with me. Frostwalker boots, in case you're not aware, allow you to actually walk on water. Get the iron out of the furnaces and block up the coal. But like I was saying, there's a lot of history in this part of the world. There are a lot of communities that I discovered and fortified. Many to the east and many more to the west. Thunderstorm. The only thing we're going to do right now is sleep and get rid of this thunderstorm. But I think we're going to take a, a trip to another village that I haven't been to in a very, very, very long time. 
this birch village was very young the last time I visited the village that we're heading to. And unlike some of the other villages on this southern ocean, this village has a sad story. I didn't get the walls up in time. So the zombies, well, they terrorized this little community and wiped out all of its inhabitants. I was thinking maybe of trying to repopulate this village at some point. But I haven't gotten around to that yet. The access is right over there. I have a marker that shows us that the river is right over here. And at the end of this lonely little river, far away in a remote corner, of the Southern Ocean lies this desert village, this ghost village, devoid of any inhabitants. It sits stoically. A reminder of better times. Look at this dolphin that followed me in. It looks like he's having a great time. I don't know, is he stuck? Is he stuck in that block? No, he's just swimming around, playing with my boat having a really good time. Perhaps he'll wait for us. We shouldn't be too long. What a character. I just love dolphins. If you're swimming in the water, with a dolphin, you can get the effect known as Dolphin's Grace, which actually speeds up your s swimming speed significantly. Now here we are in this abandoned village. Here's the old blacksmith shop. but no blacksmith. And up over here is a stable with a horse. I'm surprised this horse is still here because it's been years since I've been back here. And this is my base of operations, just as I left it many years ago. Now what do we have going on back here? Oh yes, the desert temple that I raided. Just some basic, basic supplies. Food, weapons, 
some blocks and uh, some torches. Now, out there is an early sand mine. I mined a lot of sand for glass from this location and planted some oak trees. We'll make our way out. The sun is still relatively high. And we are well provisioned, so I don't anticipate any trouble. As long as we're smart. Now, I wonder if there's anything that I left in this desert temple. Oh, I've got it blocked off. Well, maybe we won't fool around here. Now, this village is pretty far south, but I have another another outpost even further south, and it has been as long as it's been since I visited this village. It's been a lot longer since I visited this outpost. So what do you say in the spirit of adventure? We head on over to the long forgotten sandstone mine. And these dirt towers show us the way and it is a proper long trip. I recall that it, it took a good day to get there by horse. And maybe we should have gone back and given the horse some exercise, but we're already en route. So we'll keep on trekking. Now, in my underground garden, back at the compound, I used sandstone to kind of brace the ceiling to make it look a little bit more appealing. And pretty much all the sandstone that's in that room I got from this sandstone mine. Now the sun is sinking and I don't want to get caught in this desert when the sun goes down. There should be a, an overnight shelter close by. Because in the old days when I made this trip on foot, I had to build a few overnight shelters to ensure that I would make the trip to and from in one piece. Now we really need to run. There's a shelter, and not a moment too soon, because as you can see, the sun is just about to touch the horizon, 
and usher in the night. And we don't like the night. the night brings beings who wish to partake of our flesh, who wish to do us great harm. The civilized world as we know it ceases to exist when the sun sinks below the horizon and the true horror of Minecraft is unleashed and there is one of those beings the notorious desert zombie known as the husk and he seems to be all alone at the moment, but he will not be alone for long. This isn't my first rodeo. What's that? skeleton, a husk, and a witch. Oh boy, there's a veritable monster party out there tonight. The witch vanished. But we all know she'll turn up somewhere. Now maybe these monsters have a primitive form of intelligence because they can clearly see my shelter and they are wary of getting too close. If they see me, however, they'll make a beeline for me and try to snuff out my life. Now he just took a shot at me. So we'll use the fortifications built into this shelter to dispatch this critter. And we'll rob his corpse of anything and everything that may help us survive. Here comes one of the husk. We don't want to get hit by a husk or he'll give us a, uh, a poison effect for a few seconds. Now this husk seems to be smarter than the skeleton. He doesn't want to engage. Perhaps he was watching his fellow creepy crawly get cut down. he's giving this structure a wide berth. And I don't have any ill intent. I tend to be a very passive person. 
I live and let live. But if somebody threatens my life, they're going to be the one that goes down. Here's our friend, Mr. Husk, heading for the hills. Well, we'll wish him good riddance. A lot of creepers out there. Creepers can do a lot of damage if they blow up in the desert. They can destroy sand like like no tomorrow. And I'm kind of starting to get a little bit tired, if I may say so myself, but this is not the time slip. We need to remain alert and vigilant because as you can see, the witch is back. She seems to be popping in and out with regularity. I can't stand the witch. I had a very close call with one on my first real wilderness encounter about a week after I first started playing. Now that was a battle for the ages. Stone sword and no armor. How I survived that <laughs> is beyond me. Now it seems like this night has been so long Finally, there's a ray, a glimmer of hope. The sun is soon to rise. And when it does, it will vanquish this land of all the beasts that rise in the night to feast. As long as that Enderman doesn't steal my dirt, we won't have any problems. Yes, I'm looking at you, mister. Keep your hands to yourself. Now we're going to give the sun ample time to get high in the sky before we set out because in the desert creepers and husks do not burn well creepers don't burn anywhere but husks in the desert it typically takes till around 11 o'clock for the desert to be safe. Sunrise, there, there are still a number of hostile mobs that you don't want to run into. Now there's a skeleton taking a, a bath 
and we'll leave him be. We'll give him a wide berth. I really wish I brought food other than golden apples. But no matter. I have food at the sandstone mine. So we'll set out on our walking adventure and pray that we make it in one piece to this long abandoned outpost. Now this is some pretty treacherous terrain. Out of rugged hills that we must cross. Avoiding pitfalls. The original path was far more dangerous than this one. We'll drop down through this draw. Oh, look, some stragglers. And we'll keep following these dirt beacon towers. They're the only thing keeping us on track. These deserts are very, very easy get lost then. Oh, there's another overnight shelter. Maybe we'll just kind of take a peek into this place. See if there's anything I left. No. But no matter, because we are nearing the outpost, just on the other side of this hill, we come into an acacia forest, a savanna biome. And here we are. Years later, we've made it back to the sandstone mine. Let's head inside.